In today's video, I'm gonna be showcasing you my experience with gardening and how it's important to learn about the sizing and living conditions of plants before you plant them. Right over here, I have a willow tree. I have a firebush that's non-native that I'm gonna get rid of. Um, and I have this fiddle wood that I just transplanted from up there. So up there, because there's nothing, I have this root bound wild lime right here that I'm going to finally plant in the ground. Um, I do know that it's not frost tolerant. However, that's gonna be um, handy because it's gonna prevent us from having to constantly trim this ginormous wild lime once it's planted up there. And so what I'm trying to do is, is I'm going to take out both the fire bush, the native willow, and I'm going to be putting in this fiddle wood over here. I think it'll be a better spot for a fiddle wood. I'm gonna be putting that willow in a pot because I don't really have a moist area for it. And the wild lime is gonna be placed up here. So now that we have the fiddle wood there, all I have to do is pot up that um, stuff. I'm gonna definitely do a crazy chop on this because I want it to be more upward and less of a bush. So I'm gonna kind of chop this a little bit upward so it has kind of a canopy. Um, and I, I think this is gonna do a lot better here than the willow tree did or the fire bush. The fire bush isn't even native and I don't want it to hybridize with our native species. It does look a little wild, but I hope it fills in a little bit differently than when I first planted it. Whew, okay. All right guys, so I finally have my wild lime basically placed in the right area of how I want it to kind of grow and clash with everything else. Um, the reason why I'm planting this plant here is because this area during the frost area or where it freezes, it basically cuts back my bougainvillea down every year. So it's gonna do the same thing for the wild lime. Wild limes can handle um, frost. They will actually grow back, um, even though they're more of a South Florida plant. Um, but I love this plant because not only does it, you know, add privacy screening, um, it has the thorns that, you know, the birds know and love and nest in. It has, you know, the non-edible little lime fruit on it for the birds as well. But it is a host plant to the giant swallowtail. And this plant produces a ton of new growth. So um, when you plant this in your yard, you'll definitely see giant swallowtails using it constantly, especially during the growing seasons and the growing times of the month, unlike other host plants that the giant swallowtails use. There are a couple of plants that are up here that I'm gonna have to transplant. But the plant is pretty much mocked up to where I kinda want it. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a hole that's bigger than the pot. So that way you have a hole that you can refill the dirt in properly to prevent air touching the roots and harming your plant it allows the plant to establish itself a little bit better too because when you dig a bigger hole then the dirt is going to be a lot softer and the roots are allowed to penetrate into the native soil I have finally finished with planting this ginormous wild lime here. I'm pretty picky, so even though I did knock it up and stuff, I ended up moving it again and again and again. Just watering it to get it nice and established. The only thing that I do worry about is this gap right here, but I think it's, it's you know, it's not too big or not too small. So these bushes will end up touching once this one gets a little bit older. But so far, I'm liking it. You probably can see it, maybe. But right there where my finger is pointing, 
is a black racer sun basking in my garden just how beautiful let's try to see if we can get closer do you see how big this black racer is y'all that thing is at least four feet ah oh i found a lizard oh my god we got it on video it caught the lizard oh my goodness thank you so the lizard that it's eating is just an invasive cuban and all that was crazy it is eating the lizard alive oh my god oh my goodness <laughs> <clears throat> he just swallowed that lizard alive oh my goodness and he's looking at me like yeah you saw that oh my god no wonder that thing is a beauty okay now it's staring at the mouth the the mic uh-uh okay we'll leave you alone it's looking at us like leave us alone <gasps> red admiral there's a red admiral finally oh my god oh my god we are seeing all this wildlife this is what happens when you plant native plants all right now that the hat has come off and the gloves have come off i am finally finished with planting my wild lime transplanting my fiddlewood and putting my willow into a pot so for you guys it was a couple minutes but for me it's hours and i'm just going to give you guys one more check around real quick this is my bougainvillea and that is my wild lime. Behind there, I accidentally kind of trampled my native Maypop passion vine. Hopefully it's gonna climb all the way up and reach this non-native that has a little bit of sentimental value. Um, and then I'm thinking because there's like a little bit of space right here, I might put either um, a Kunti palm or a salt palmetto in here just to kind of like have like greenery throughout this entire thing. I do know that eventually these two shrubs will touch, but if I put something low like a Kunti palm, it should be fine. So over here is where I put the fiddle wood. I transplanted the tropical sages that were already here and put them over here instead. All right, guys, and that's why I say it's very important to research and understand the area in which you live in. That way, you can plant the right plants in the right place. That way, you're not too worried about not having enough moisture or it being too wet. And then you plant something that doesn't really thrive there. However, it continues to stay alive somehow because that's what plants do. They try their best to try to live wherever you plant them. So if you plant them in the right place and you plant them knowing what size they can turn into, you will definitely have a better success as well as also understanding what zones those plants thrive in and how you can get away with things. Like for instance, the wild lime, it is more of a Southern plant and it thrives in that Southern heat and warm temperatures. Whereas in 9B where I stay, it doesn't really thrive as much. So I won't have to worry about chopping it back. And so when you think about things like frost, you think about sizing you think about you know planting it in the right place those three things matter especially if you want to be a zero scaper and once you start your garden you won't be you know wondering in your head if you made the right choice of planting that plant there so anyways i hope you enjoyed that quick little video and remember guys your time will come to finally be a butterfly